Good day, philosophers. We've just finished the first five modules of our course, and uh, I just want to reflect on some of these big ideas, because this week, instead of having a traditional uh, module of learning activities, you're going to take your first real exam. And so I'm, we're basically devoting this entire week to that. And But I want to give you a quick reflection, a quick summary of some of these core ideas that we've encountered uh, within these first five weeks of, of, of just really first studying philosophy and encountering Socrates through the writings of Plato, right? So let's let's consider some of these big ideas. And that, one of the first big ideas that I want us to, to realize is that we, we, we needed to begin by thinking about what a philosopher is. Um, I, I, from the very first class, I suggested to you that, in fact, we as human beings, we are all philosophers. Uh, why? Because we can't escape um, the questions that a philosopher asks. Uh, uh, fundamentally, what was a philosopher? But a philosopher was a lover of wisdom, a true lover of wisdom, not someone who just believed they were wise, but someone who sought wisdom above all things, someone who's ultimately passionately devoted to wisdom, right? And 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 where does this passion devote to wisdom come from? In some ways, because we realize wisdom is something that's good for its own sake. It's worthwhile for its own sake, right? We, we, we don't live like other animals. We don't live like other things in the universe that seem to primarily be just concerned about their own survival and just their own um uh, continuation, right? But but we we actually reflect on reality itself. Sometimes we reflect on the beauty of things and 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 just how how awesome we contemplate um, the truths and the beautiful aspects of existence. And we realize that for its own sake. Like we write music, um, we 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 write poetry, right? We draw beautiful paintings like this. We and and these things are all expressions of our of our of our love of what's of of, of contemplation. And we'll reflect on that even more in Aristotle in a further module. And so we realize that it's worth knowing the answers to questions of wisdom just for their own sake. But, but in, 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 in even more than that, though, maybe not, maybe not more than that. In addition to that, we also realize that ideas have consequences. Ideas have consequences. So, so we, we, we as a philosopher seek wisdom also for the consequences, not just the consequence that I could have in my own life, though I don't want to be a fool. I don't want to be a person who who um, just makes foolish decisions throughout their whole life. But if we reflect on even our society as a whole, that the, 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 the that if we look at the way the world is right now, the way the world is becoming, there's there's big ideas that underlie all this, that fundamental answers to the, to the key philosophical questions lead to the world that we actually live in, right? So, so if you're frustrated with reality, in some ways, it's because there's some philosophical ideas that, 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 that some answers to deep philosophical questions that ultimately motivate and create the world that we're in. And so for, uh, for us as humans, we need to do philosophy, not just because um, it, it addresses a deep human need to understand these questions that matter, but also um, a reality that the world we live in is shaped by our answers to philosophical questions, right? And so so what were some of those? What were some of the things that, that we need to think about as a philosopher, someone who's passionately devoted to wisdom, right? Well, we need to think about what's good in human action. What's the right thing for us to do? We, we, we can't help but live our lives making choices constantly. And so we need to, to reflect critically on how we even determine what's the right thing to do. What really is the best course of action throughout my life, right? We, and, and, and all of that, we need to fundamentally reflect on what it even means to know at all. Because uh, so often we're, we're, we can be so confident with the kind of choices that we make, but, but to what extent are they rooted in actual knowledge or are they just a matter of opinion? Um, can there be knowledge? And if there is knowledge, what the heck is it and how do we acquire it? We need to understand this, right? And, and then fundamentally even this, this really deep question about what is the nature of reality itself? That, that what is the nature of the reality of the things that I try to know, but more deeply, like what is this world that we live in? What is the nature of things, you know, and, 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 and our fundamental beliefs, our fundamental conclusions about these things lead to the world that we live in. Also, just knowing these things are great for their own sake. So when, so when, when we went through our modules, when we started studying Plato, we, we ultimately were reflecting on all these kinds of things. We began by encountering Socrates, having these conversations with people, right? Socrates engaging people. And what did he do? Well, he, he fundamentally always asked someone to give um, a definition of something. Remember when we, when we studied um, uh, the Euthyphro, we, we ha he asked uh, Euthyphro for the definition of piety. When when we were reading the Republic, we we're asking for the definition of justice. Throughout all of Plato's writings, we encounter Socrates as someone who's fundamentally wants someone to be able to just explain what something is. And, and now, why is he going around asking people these questions about things, right? 
well, as you see, kind of becomes a student, but um, he doesn't just want to hear a bunch of opinions. He doesn't just want to hear people's viewpoints about stuff. He doesn't actually, in some ways, even care what just what your viewpoint is. He doesn't want a collection of opinions. What Plato fundamentally wants is he wants to, to really understand. He wants to know the, the answers to these philosophical questions, right? And so so often we, we, we say these things in reality. Um, we, we say these things like, you know, speak your truth, right? And, and, and to say speak your truth in some ways it is, is talking about something that's very true. And, and fundamentally, all of us as human beings have our own unique experiences, our own unique perspectives, our, 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 um, our own stories that we've heard that sort of shape the way that we view all of reality itself. And so to some extent, um, we, that can dramatically differ, right? That in some ways, it's almost like we're living in different worlds. Um, you know, from one person to the next sometimes, right? But 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 what Socrates tries to do is he doesn't just want to hear all your multiple perspectives. He says, even if your perspective, your unique experience of the world is so utterly unique, we still all live in the same world. There is the world itself and it's uh, in what it is. And the world just is what it is. Your perspective on it may differ, but the world fundamentally is what it is. And so for him, he doesn't want to just hear what you think justice is. He wants to to know what justice actually is. You know, so often it's easy to think that these deep philosophical questions, because they're 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 so deep and personal, that it, that there is no answer to them. And that was not Socrates' belief. He fundamentally thought that that there are answers to these philosophical questions. And the philosopher is the person who's uh, who's completely devoted to seeking those answers. So what did that look like in Socrates' conversations with people? Well, he did not become a student that just said, oh, let me write down all your opinions and just like collect them and, and think that's nice. No, he fundamentally constantly challenged people to try to get to uh, to realize that they didn't necessarily know what they thought they knew, that, that, that he would push you and challenge you until uh, you would see all the contradictions in your own viewpoints to realize the vagueness of your thoughts and to, and, and to realize that you fundamentally maybe have never in your life sought to get to the true definitions, the true ideas of things themselves at all. Now, um, uh, at, we, we, we read Plato's Republic, at least in part, and, and there we actually saw Socrates taking up the question of justice. And, and as he tried to understand what justice was, uh, fundamentally, we, we saw that in the end, justice had, was a kind of ideal. Justice was this perfect harmony that exists when each part of your soul or each part of the city are, uh, d does their part, um, that they are fundamentally guided by wisdom to, to seek what is fundamentally good for each part and good for the whole simultaneously. It's a, it's a true kind of oneness, right? So justice in the city and justice in the soul is where from the many, we become one, right? And, and, and that notion, uh, that theme of the one and the many, we saw all over the place with Plato. But this, the, this idea is that, that we don't, can't necessarily, um, to just uh, understand what justice is in this world without trying to get to this fundamental ideal that we need to understand what justice is in itself. And this, 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 this led to a sort of a metaphysical question about even the nature of reality itself. So we start in the fourth module, we started asking ourselves about the, the nature of time. And, and, and we, and we see in Plato that all of reality as being part of time is constantly in flux. You know, Plato reflected deeply on Heraclitus who said that you can't step in the same river twice. So that everything that we experience in reality is constantly changing, constantly in flux, um, that, that we as human beings are, are never the same over time. And so this seems to be our, uh, that mean, that is a, our common experience of reality itself, that the world itself is constantly changing and imperfect. And so how can we know anything at all? Socrates argued fundamentally then in the Cratylus, if everything is constantly changing. And he says, we can't, there needs to be something that that's unchanging. And so we saw that time, remember the definition of time, time is this moving image of eternity. So the, the way in which things are constantly changing, the way that our existence in time is just this fleeting moment where it's a constant becoming. I'm never just staying what I am. I'm constantly becoming something else. Everything that we experience is constantly becoming something else. For Plato, there exists in contradistinction to that um, eternity, right? And and any existence we have here is just an image of that eternal existence. Now, this this leads us to thinking about reality itself metaphysically, right? And what is the, how is it that we can know at all? Well, if, we, if there is knowledge, it needs to be knowledge of something that is fundamentally unchanging. So when Plato said, okay, the world that we experience is constantly in flux, constantly changing, constantly imperfect, we realize that it, everything that we do experience though, it can only be understood as being in relationship to the perf 
the the perfect form that that we're imitating, that we're participating in, right? So we think about the world that we actually exist in, the world we actually live in. It isn't reality. <laughs> the world we actually live in is is imperfect, right? The world we actually live in is just an image of the reality that we want to see. So as a philosopher, when we're trying to answer these deep philosophical questions then for Plato, he says, we can't just look at opinions. We can't just look at the, 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 the world as we see it because the world as we see it isn't the reality of things. We'll never understand what justice is by trying to look at all the acts people do in the world and, and calling them just or unjust. Because guess what? None of them truly are just. Just like a tri you've never seen something that truly is a triangle, right? The triangle and the perfection of, of being what a, a triangle is. And so, um, uh, and, and so everything that we experience is just a shadow of the true reality. We as philosophers, our mission is to get outside of this world, to set opinion aside, not to just listen to people's opinions and to be like, oh, that's great. No, but to get beyond opinion, to get to the true answers to these deep philosophical questions. And for him, that means getting outside of our experience, getting to the realm of the forms, the true definitions, what aren't sentences, which are the perfect, unchanging realities that everything that we experience fundamentally imitates, participates in, right? So now, now, of course, we're left with a question in some ways of what, what, <laughs> how do we get to these forms, right? And, um, and, and, and at best, we, we do it through our minds, through reason, but we don't have a really wonderful, clear, beautiful, um, philosophical answer to that in some ways, um, though, though Plato does provide them um, as best he can. But this is one of the reasons why we'll, in our following lectures, go on and study Aristotle and uh, as another philosopher who tries to deal with these exact same kinds of questions, but has a, as, um, a different kind of metaphysics, a different kind of foundation about the nature, nature of reality itself, which then plays itself out into the, in the, in, um, in the, into Aristotle's epistemology about his, the, the role of opinion and knowledge and trying to understand and fundamentally will have uh, um, uh, implications for his ethics and his politics and understanding what, how we understand and do what is good in the world. And so my friends, this is a, a summary of our, of our, First part of class, as you take your first real exam, um, you'll see that the exam is, is structure is much like the um, the quizzes and the reflection questions you've been thinking about uh, before, um, and uh, except you have to do it all the same in a, in a finite amount of time. So um, uh, the best way to prepare is to go back over all of the, the reflection questions I've given you in the past, uh, all the, the reading questions, um, each of the, the module comprehension questions and, and, and familiarize yourself with that. Make sure you have good notes and then um, you'll be ready for that uh, exam. If you have questions, please reach out to me. Have a beautiful day. Uh, catch you on the flip side.